Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed writing automated cucumber tests. Today we're going to have a look at a more advanced concept of using multiple step definition files when writing step definition classes for feature files. We will look at how to write multiple step definition classes to cater for both singular and multiple feature files and we will look at some of the common pitfalls you can come across when trying to write multiple step definition files. We'll also briefly discuss the advantages of doing this as well. So as always let's just navigate to our Java test site first. So the scenario that we're going to automate is once we're on our Java test site we're going to click on adoption and we're going to go to the drop down here and we're going to select one of the values and we'll select today and that's it. So it's a pretty straightforward scenario. Click on a link, select an item from a drop down. Effectively there's no more than three steps in this. So if we go to our test, I've already written a really basic test. It has a background step where all it's doing is navigate to the site and then as part of the scenario I'm clicking on adoption then selecting an item from the drop down and then just closing the browser. So before running the test let's have a quick look. Uh, so we've got a single step definition class. In it we have all our steps defined including an instantiation of the driver uh, because it is done as part of our first given step uh, alongside all the other remaining steps. So let's just run the test just to make sure it works. So I'm going to right click run as cucumber feature. Fantastic, looks like it's worked. So if we have a look at the console output, nothing too fancy. We can see that it's just was able to map each of the steps to the relevant step definition and it also tells us where the step definitions were, which is pretty good. Before we start breaking this up into multiple step definition classes, let's take a moment to think about this. So how do we actually want to break up our step definition classes? What would be a logical approach to it? Should we for instance have a given step definition class, a when step definition class and a then step definition class? Or would it make more sense to have something like a click definition class and a input text definition class? What about definition classes which are strictly related to the browser such as opening a browser or closing a browser? So there are various different ideologies we can apply when writing a step definition class. I personally, when writing step definition classes, have my step definition class represent an actual web page and then have all the relevant steps for that given web page in that step definition class. For instance, I might write a step definition class for each one of my links or I might write a step definition class that represents a particular area that is universally available on any given page, for example the footer. Now why might I do that? Because to me it just makes logical sense to put everything in almost like containers really. Also it isn't the same as saying writing the page object pattern for instance, but it does implement this concept of having things a little bit more organized, a little bit more manageable. So for this video that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write multiple step definition classes where each step definition class represents a page or represents a collection of steps which otherwise are universally available on any given page. So let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is just have a look at our step definition class and what I'm going to do is create a new one. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and I'm going to call this one common page step definition. Now what my common page step definition class will do is, well its purpose is to contain a list of all the common steps which are available for any given page. For instance the ability to close a browser isn't necessarily tied to a specific page. 
you can do this on any given page. So it would make sense to have this step inside this common page step definition class. Uh, the ability to navigate to the zoo site again doesn't necessarily belong in a specific page but is more universal. Uh, this step for instance when I click on so in this step I pass in whatever link I want to click on so again this link appears on multiple pages so for me it makes sense to have it in my common page step definition class uh, something like this however then I set the start date too now this particular step is only available on the adoption page so it would make sense if I were to say create another step definition class for the adoption page and only put that step in it. So let's do that as well. So again I'm just going to paste and this time I'm going to call this class adoption page step definition. Okay so let's just open up all our pages so the first thing I'm going to do is, because I don't plan on using the step definition class anymore, I'm just going to delete it, because I don't need it anymore. Okay, get rid of that. So now we're left with two pages, or rather two step definition classes. One where everything is common, and another where we're on a very specific page, looking for a very specific step. So on the adoption page step definition class, I'm going to remove all the steps, except the set date step because that is the only step that is tied to that particular page. If we go back to common page step definition class I'm going to remove the start date step because that isn't common to every page. However the remaining ones which are left i.e. given I'm on a zoo site when I click on something and when I close a the browser they can be repeated or rather performed on any given page. So it makes sense for them to be as part of this common page step definition class. Now, the first pitfall of doing this, where we separate steps between multiple classes, is this. When we instantiate our driver, in other words, when we're using our driver and we're going through steps, this class retains an instance of this driver. However, when we switch to another step in another step definition class, we've effectively lost the instance to that driver. For instance, when we run our feature file, what will happen is we will do this step fine and then do this step fine because they both belong in the same class, i.e. the same common page step definition class. But when it tries to do this, i.e. set the start date to today, in other words, it's going to look at the adoption page step definition class it's going to throw a null pointer on driver because the driver hasn't actually been set inside this class. So to prove this, what we'll do is quickly run it and see what happens. Okay, so let's close the browser. So if we have a look at the output, we can see that we actually did have a null pointer exception thrown at us and it was in fact here, i.e. the driver wasn't set. So this is the first pitfall we have to go through. This is the first hurdle we have to jump over. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this, but the best way I think is to write an abstract step definition class. And in the abstract class, what we can do is instantiate our driver and have all of our step definitions inherit from that class that way we will have the same driver instance being shared between multiple different step definition classes therefore giving us more control over managing the driver primarily in one place and also stopping us from having this null pointer thrown at us so let's do that let's write a really quick abstract step definition class so to do that I'm just gonna right click say new create class and I'm gonna call it abstract page step definition save that and in here all I'm going to say is 
Well, I'm going to create an instance of driver first. So I'm just going to make it protected. And I'm also going to write a protected method saying web driver where we actually get the driver. And in here, I'm going to say if the driver is null. So in other words, if the driver hasn't been instantiated, go ahead and instantiate it. And then just return the driver. So let's go ahead and import in the necessary classes. So what does this do? Well, when this method is called for the very first time, this statement here will be true because driver would be null since we haven't instantiated it. And this will go ahead and instantiate the driver and then it will just return the driver. And when this method is called again for the second time and any other time after that, because the driver has been instantiated, this will come out as false and it will just return the driver. So this is a really basic method which basically will instantiate the driver for the first time this method is called and then every time after that it will just return the same instance of the driver. So now what we can do is go to our page objects and actually inherit that. So we can just say extends and that will extend it and as a result we can remove this because we're inheriting the driver from the abstract page so let's just get rid of that and we can do the same thing for our common page step definition and we can also remove the reference to the web driver also we can remove this driver here because we don't need it anymore since we are creating the instance here. So the only thing left now is just to get the instance of the driver. So to do that, uh, I guess we actually do need the instance of the driver. Apologies for that. So just do web driver driver is equal to get driver. What this will do now is create a new instance of the driver and get it. So we can now use this inside our step definition class and repeat the same thing for the adoption page step definition class like so let's just save everything and have a quick look at what we've just done so for our abstract page step definition class what we've done is basically created a null instance of the driver we've also created a get driver method which returns driver if the driver hasn't been instantiated, it will instantiate it and then return the driver. And every other time it's called, because we've already instantiated it, it will return us the same instances of the driver. If we look at our common page step definition now, when we come to this page, it will get the instance of the driver, i.e. it will get the same instance of the same driver and just assign it to this. And then this same instance of the driver will be used throughout the steps. The same thing will happen when we try and invoke this step in the adoption page setup definition class. Now before we run our test, the one final thing to do is just make sure that our driver can actually be shared across different classes. And the way to do that is to go back to our abstract page step definition class and make the instance of our driver static. So what does static do? Well, really quickly, what static does is it retains the value of a member variable in a class after the class has been destroyed. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the only thing I'm going to say is as you're using classes, uh, you basically construct them and you destroy them. And after a cl class has been destroyed, any values that any member variables carried in the class are also destroyed with it. However, if you mark something as static, then that information is retained in the JVM. So for us, what that means is, when we instantiate our driver, if for any given reason this class is destroyed as a process of running the steps, the value for the driver will still be retained, which means we can continue to use whatever we assign to the driver, in this case a new Firefox driver instance. 
So let's go ahead and run our test just to make sure it works and to test our theory. Fantastic, looks like it's worked. Or rather, it looks like we haven't seen any errors. So let's take a slightly more detailed look. It looks like our given step, our click on adoption link, and the close browser step were all taken from the common page step definition class. And our set the start date step was taken from our adoption page step definition class. So this proves that our steps were actually taken from the correct step definition classes, which is pretty good because it allows us to now confirm that we are able to write multiple step definition class so that we can write better step so that we can maintain writing more steps over time. So in this video what did we learn? Well we looked at a concept of separating a potentially large step definition class into multiple step definition classes. We applied the analogy of having step definition classes reflecting web pages therefore planting this ideology of making our step definition classes much more specific to what is potentially contained inside them. For instance, the common page step definition classes contain steps which are common across all pages. But our adoption page step definition class contains steps which are specific to the adoption page. We also hit a hurdle where we were unable to use the instance of our driver, but we resolved it quite quickly by writing an abstract page and getting it to handle the instance of the driver and propagate that information to any step definition class that inherits from it. So in this video we've actually learned a lot in that we found a way to break a single step definition class into multiple step definition classes and we found a way to even better manage our instance of the driver. The advantage this gives us is we now have the ability to write step definitions for any given web page through an isolated step definition class and also be able to manage the driver by simply inheriting from the abstract page step definition class. So this video was actually requested by a number of you where you actually asked me or rather you requested that I do a video on how to manage multiple step definition classes and this is the concept that I use and I apply to any frameworks that I create which run on Cucumber and for me it's worked pretty well because I'm able to do a lot of things, I'm able to extend this as well uh, giving me the ability to implement other ideologies as well and I hope that this concept answers some of your questions uh, better yet I hope it also springs you to ask me further more questions and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hi guys I really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.